Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends, Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevan Welder. Today we're going to talk about the thief on the cross, the thief on the cross in Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. And uh, the topic is this, the thief on the cross believed. The thief on the cross believed. Let's read the text, Luke chapter 23. Begin with reading with me in verse 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Now, in this particular passage, the thing that, that strikes me now is simply this. This thief, the thief on the cross, believed in spite of the fact that he had a lot of excuses for not believing. And that's, that's what's so um, interesting to me at this particular time in reading about this particular man that got saved. And here's why. People offer a lot of excuses for why they can't believe on Jesus. When you deal with them, uh, they will give you any number of excuses. Now, we're not going to deal with all the excuses they give today because all of the excuses they give are not contained in the text, and we're confining ourselves to the text. So in spite of the fact that they offer a lot of excuses, listen, you can believe on Jesus. And the reason is the thief on the cross believed. And if he did, surely you can. The thief on the cross believed on on Jesus in spite of the fact that, and here are these excuses, number one, he had first railed on Jesus. You see, when you read verse 39 in Luke, the Bible says, one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But when you go back to Matthew chapter 27 and look at verse 44, and remember now, the Gospels are complementary. They are supplementary. They are they are not contradictory. In other words, Luke says one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Matthew chapter 27, verse 44 says, The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. That means that's the same kind of expression we use today when we say, you're going to eat those words, cast the same in his teeth. Now, what happened is that that crowd had been hollering, and in verse 42, they said he saved others, himself he cannot say, if he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. So the other malefactor simply repeats what the crowd has been saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But notice from Matthew chapter 27, verse 44, both of them, both of them were railing on Jesus early on. In other words, the thief on the cross that got saved had started out just like the thief in verse 39 by making accusations against the Lord Jesus Christ. May I tell you something? You may have cursed him too. That's right. You may have cursed him too back in those days. 
But may I tell you something? That's that's no excuse for not receiving you. You say, well, cursing the Lord is a horrible thing. The Bible says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. True enough. True enough. However, in Matthew chapter 12, the Lord had been accused of casting out devils by the devil, by, by Satan, by Beelzebub. And notice what, he, what the Lord said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Verse 32, and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Look what he said. Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. So in spite of the fact that this thief had first railed on Jesus Christ, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was forgiven for blaspheming the Son of Man, for blaspheming Jesus Christ. Now, you may look back on your life and, and, and realize, man, I have cursed God. I have said things that I shouldn't have said, on and on and on. May I tell you something? The fact that you may have taken the Lord's name in vain is no excuse to refuse to receive Jesus Christ. It's not. And it wasn't for this thief. He simply changed his mind. Listen, you may have been an evolutionist, and you may have said Jesus could not have created the universe, and now you, you may have changed your mind, but you say, well, because I held that position for so long and have taught other people so, I couldn't possibly come to him now and receive him. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It doesn't make any difference what you've said about him or what you said to him. You say, well, when I was younger, my child died or I, I went bankrupt or some horrible thing happened to you and I raised my fist into his face and I cursed him. I can't now come to him and receive him. Yes, you can. There have been many people who in life face such dire and drastic cases of disappointment uh, that they didn't know where to turn their, with their anger. They didn't know where to go with their anger. And so what, <laughs> what happened is they just did like so many of us have done before and looked up to the ceiling, looked up to the sky and took it out all on God and said horrible things against the Lord God and against the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, a lot of people have done that. And the fact that you took it out on the Lord Jesus Christ and you still have held him responsible for that horrible event in your past, uh, a molestation when you were a child, um, a, a, a terrible, terrible marriage, something like that. Listen, may I tell you something? You know better now it wasn't his fault and, and. You realize now that you need to be saved and you can come to him as if nothing like that had ever happened before. This thief had railed on Jesus Christ and yet he came to him and believed on him and the Lord saved him. He'll do the same for you. Second thing, the thief on the cross believed in spite of the fact that his friend didn't fear God. In Luke chapter 23, verse 40, the other answering rebuked him saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And the answer was no. The other thief did not fear God. And you know something? You may have friends that don't want to receive Jesus. And the fact that they don't want to receive Jesus is no reason for you to refuse. Your friends are not going to answer for you before God. You're going to have to answer for yourself. As a matter of fact, the way I see it, the way I understand it anyway, your friends aren't even going to be standing there with you. You're going to be standing alone, one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. And your friend's refusal to receive Christ is no excuse for you to refuse to receive him. We say, but you don't know my friends. Uh, my friends are in a gang, and if I turn and receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, they're going to turn their back on me. They may even kill me. Well, if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ and they do, thank God, like this thief, you're going to wind up in heaven. But if you keep on going with those friends and refusing the Lord Jesus Christ, you and they are going to wind up in hell. It's not worth it. I remember years ago uh, meeting a fellow that had just gotten released from prison and he had been in a gang. And the way that I met him, we were out doing some uh, door knocking. 
And we came up to a house, knocked on the door, nobody answered. And as we were moving on to the next house, I heard uh, what I thought was a muffled voice in the backyard. That was very curious, but I thought, well, somebody is here. And I went out to the backyard. It was a small house and a small lot in the backyard. There was a very small bumper pull trailer, and I mean very small. And the muffled voice that I heard was coming from inside that trailer, so I just simply knocked on the door. And the fellow came to the door and answered it, and we struck up a conversation, found out that he had professed to believe in Jesus Christ while he was in the prison, in the penitentiary, and he had been in a gang. And so they weren't going to let him out of the gang, and yet he was sincere in his faith, and so they said, okay, we're going to let you out of the gang, but if you ever turn your back on the Lord Jesus Christ, we're coming to get you. Now, he was scared to death, and that's why he was praying and praying audibly in the trailer because he knew if any of his friends had come by, he wanted them to know he was still serving the Lord. His friends did not fear God, and, and you know something? He feared his friends. He was scared. I doubt very seriously that you have been threatened with death if you would trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, like he had been. I think you're more threatened by ridicule and more threatened by peer pressure and more threatened by the fact that some of your friends will leave you and go somewhere else once you turn Jesus Christ as your Savior. I, I believe that. And it's holding you back. It didn't hold this thief back. And it shouldn't hold you back. Listen, just because the friends you have now don't fear God doesn't mean that you can't meet up with some other ones who do. In other words, there are... <laughs> There's a, there's, there, what happens in salvation is you receive Jesus Christ and you end up with some new friends. And some of the old friends, thank God, will get saved. Some won't. Those who don't, you guys aren't going to be friends much longer because they don't like what Christians do and you don't like what lost people do. But the fact that your friends refuse to receive Jesus Christ is no excuse for you to refuse to receive him. And it wasn't an excuse for this thief. He believed in spite of the fact that he had first railed on Jesus, and he believed in spite of the fact that his friend didn't fear God. But that's not all. The thief on the cross believed in spite of the fact that he had committed capital crimes. In Luke 23, verse 41, this thief on the cross says to the other, We indeed justly. Well, let's get the, contact, the, the context. The other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Now, the due reward of the man's deeds was death. They were suffering the death penalty. That means they had committed a capital crime. And you know something? You may have done many bad things as well. Really. You, uh, it's an amazing thing, but in doing work in the ministry, I've met some people that have done some bad things. I've done some bad things. But may I tell you something? You have never done anything that has made you so bad that you can't get saved. You've not as, been as bad as this thief. And he believed on Jesus. Listen, your past is no excuse to refuse to receive Jesus Christ. Let me ask you something. Have you ever read the New Testament? You say, well, yeah, I've read some of the epistles. Okay, good. You ever read uh, Romans or ever read Corinthians or Galatians or Ephesians or Philippians or Colossians? You ever read 1st or 2nd Thessalonians? 1st or 2nd Timothy? Titus? Philemon? Hebrews? You ever read any of those? All of those books were written by the same fellow. They were written by a fellow who used to be called Saul, but who is better known to us as Paul. He wrote those. And Paul, before he got saved, was a Pharisee, and he believed that he was working for God when he was opposed to Christianity. Paul persecuted churches, arrested Christians, forced them to blaspheme, and basically because of his arrests, many Christians were killed. So he was an accomplice, if you will, in their death or an accessory. 
And um, you know what he was responsible for is the kind of thing that God should certainly have sent him to hell for. But God didn't. How about old Moses? You, did you? I guess you knew that Moses had killed a man, right, before God allowed him to lead the Jews through the wilderness and up to the promised land. How about David, the great king of Israel? You know that he was responsible for the death of Bathsheba's husband. Now, let me tell you something. You and I have nothing to be proud of concerning our past. We have no business going around telling people about the things we used to do because those were in the past, and they're defiling. People shouldn't know those things about you anyway. It's not that you're proud. It's not that you're trying to present yourself as a holy roller. It's just that no one was ever edified by finding out some of the things that you used to do in the past. It doesn't help. But the things that you've done in your past, okay, they're not as bad as what Paul did. I doubt seriously they're as bad as what this thief did. Not as bad as what David did with adultery and murder. But even if they were that bad, your past is no excuse to refuse to receive Jesus Christ. He died for all sins, and you are not that bad. I've had people tell me, well, I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior, but I've done too many bad things. You may have, but not too many so that you can't get saved. The thief on the cross believed in spite of the fact that he had first railed on Jesus. His friend didn't fear God, and he had committed capital crimes. But that's not all. This next one is huge. The thief on the cross believed in spite of the fact that he was watching the Lord die. Look in Luke chapter 23, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You know what? He was watching the Lord die. He was watching him die. He says, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And he is watching the man die. Jesus isn't coming into his kingdom, not by all appearances. He is dying, and whatever chance he had for a kingdom is over. So you must understand something. It is easier for you today, much simpler for you today, to trust the risen Savior than it was for this man to trust in Jesus Christ. You know that he has risen. This man was watching him die. Do you understand? You have to ask yourself the question, how could this thief put his faith in Jesus Christ when everything that Jesus had preached was now coming to an end by all appearances? The only scripture that this thief could see at this time was the inscription written above the Lord's head. The entire inscription reads, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. May I tell you something? Those words were enough. The inscription didn't say this was Jesus of Nazareth. Because the Bible says, I am he. And he is still Jesus. Do you understand? His physical death on the cross did not eliminate his life. This is Jesus of Nazareth. Watch it. The king of the Jews. Well, he did not get his kingdom while he was here the first time. And this thief understood something. He's going to get his king. He is going to get his kingdom. This is the king of the Jews. That's what Luke's uh, writing of the inscription says in verse 38. This is the king of the Jews. You know, the Pharisees have said, no, we don't want to do it this way. Right, make them write it this way. He said he was the king of the Jews. And Pilate said, what I've written, I've written. You're going to leave it just like it is. This is the king of the Jews. The thief looks over there and he goes, okay, if that's the king, king, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Now tell me something. Does it take you more faith or him more faith to believe in Jesus Christ? Well, you know it took him more faith. 
He put his faith in the scripture he knew, and he got saved. He believed that Jesus would enter his kingdom, and this man wanted to be there with him. I'm going to tell you something. Your unbelief is no excuse to refuse to believe Jesus. So what am I going to do about it? Pick up a Bible, get in the scripture, and every time you open it, just simply pray to the Lord and say, look, if you are real, I want to trust you. Reveal that to me. He'll do it. You see, you cannot excuse yourself on ignorance. You cannot excuse yourself on unbelief. You cannot excuse yourself on your past. You cannot excuse yourself because your, fear, your friends don't fear God. You can't excuse yourself on the way that you've talked bad about the Lord before. You can't do that. Because this thief faced every similar obstacle and worked through every single one of them very simply by faith and received Jesus Christ. And so can you, and so should you. Now I'll give you another one. The thief on the cross believed in spite of the fact that he also was dying that day. Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Look at that. Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now there are people that have said, Well, Jesus we know was in the heart of the earth and and so how in the world did this thief you know that get to be with Jesus in paradise when Jesus went down and all those other kind of things men do to complicate faith I'll just tell you very simply paradise was in the heart of the earth the day that the Lord Jesus Christ died have you ever read Luke chapter 16 we preached on it recently saved men in the Old Testament Save men at this time, this thief on the cross, went into Abraham's bosom until the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was in the heart of the earth, separated by a great gulf from hell. And Jesus went there, and so did this thief. And then when Jesus rose from the dead, the souls of those that were in Abraham's bosom went up with him. Ephesians chapter 4. So, so, so don't worry about how other people have criticized the Bible in their ignorance. The Bible knows what it's talking about. Paradise was in the heart of the earth. It was in Abraham's bosom. Following the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you now find it in heaven. Just read the book of Revelation. There it is. That thief was dying that day. And in spite of the fact that he was dying... He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. He settled it all with him, basically on his deathbed, if you will. It was his cross, nonetheless. But he settled it in the last hours of his, of his life. And you may have excused yourself by saying, Well, it's too late for me. May I tell you something? It's never too late. As long as you are breathing, you can still trust Jesus Christ. The fact that the better part of your life is in the past is too bad, but it's not too late. The fact that you may be dying is no excuse to receive, refuse to receive Jesus Christ. I had a man one time who was dying. He said, well, it's so late now. I, I, that would be, well, what, how could Jesus possibly excuse me for waiting till now to receive him? I said, it's, <laughs> it's his deal, not yours. It worked for the thief, it'll work for you. And the man trusted Jesus Christ. I've seen people trust Jesus Christ within hours of their death. Back in the wars, particularly in World War I, where there was a lot of infantry warfare and chaplains were working in foxholes, there are a lot of soldiers who are in heaven right now who made their peace with Jesus Christ, who received Jesus Christ as their Savior right there in the foxhole while they were dying. I realize that when you face dire circumstances in your life, it sort of brings to reality the need to take care of business. And certainly this thief was on the cross, and it was like, man, I'm running out of options. If I don't do this now, I'll never get a chance. And I realize that. I realize that's why there are deathbed conversions. Men like, well, if I'm ever going to do it, I need to do it now. But some men actually come to that point in their life. They say, well, I've lived for myself all these years. I think it just wouldn't be right if I were to trust Jesus Christ now. You know, that may seem kind of a lame excuse to you, but it's real to some. 
And it may be real to you. That may be the one reason why you've been holding out. The fact that you may be dying is no excuse to receive, refuse to receive Jesus Christ. If you've been given news by your doctor that you have a terminal illness, then you're thinking, well, pff, now, I mean, that's, of course, you know, but I'm not going to do it. Don't, don't believe that lie. If you needed as much incentive as you've been given by finding out you have a terminal illness, go ahead and receive him anyway. It's the right thing to do. It worked for the thief. It'll work for you. Now, I'm convinced of something today. I am convinced that the reason you are hearing this broadcast today or later, if you're reading this transcript, you know what? I believe that that the reason is that you are like this thief on the cross or you know someone who is like the thief on the cross. Now, if you are like him, you should be encouraged that in spite of some rather good excuses, this thief trusted Jesus Christ on the spot. And that's what you need to do. But let's say that you are already saved. I believe you're listening to this broadcast today because you know someone who is like this thief and their excuses have halted your attempt to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. But just remember that they may think they have good excuses to receive Christ, but they really don't. And this message should encourage you to know that in spite of their excuses, they can and should trust Jesus Christ. Don't give up on them. Their time is not up until they are dead. And if they're not dead yet, then their time's not up yet. And they can still receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Do not give up on them. Just like Jesus Christ didn't give up on this thief. Listen. Don't believe their excuses. Simply continue appropriately, gently, and yet consistently to let them know they need to trust Jesus Christ. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Hallelujah.